Hi, this is Shikiro Shadows Die Twice, and I will be showing off two bosses that I think are a pretty big staple for the game. I decided to do a voiceover since I would, since this is a Soulsborne game, you definitely have to focus. <laughs> this is the first boss I will be showing, Genichiro. Genichiro is probably an earlier on boss that you'll see in the game, and he'll introduce a lot of new moves uh, when you're playing because he's the first actual decent boss you'll have to fight there are a couple others but not as good as this one as as you can see the basic combat combat is pretty basic it is there is a block there is a attack and there's a parry in the bottom right you'll have your prosthetic mods which right now i have got equipped firecrackers i'm doing this quite quickly but the top bar is the, the the top bars on the left and middle are his posture bar and his health gauge on the left, notified by red. And they sort of act like two health bars, but only one of them has to go down before you can actually kill them. Which is pretty strange to say, but a posture can... As, as you see these two, the, well there's one now, but he was these red dots above the character's name and that's how many times you've got to get their health to zero or their posture to 100 before you can actually kill them. And that means this boss fight has two phases, it means it has its first phase and it can be killed once and it has to be killed a second time. Which is why this game has, I think this is why Sekiro has its biggest selling point, which is his reviving system, hopefully we'll be able to see it. I don't know if I die or not. And that is his two phases. Now this is why I think Sekiro is this such a well-made game. As that you think you're done. You, you've never been hit with this before. But all of a sudden you'll have a, se a secret third phase. And this really throws you off as you're literally... As you, as you start you have no healing items. You have nothing... And now you're all of a sudden expected to do another phase of a fight. And keep in mind, if you lose this, that's it. You're done, you need to restart. As you've seen there, there was a lightning attack. And that lightning attack is, is a pretty... It is a shocker. It is it's a pretty heavy attack. And it is sort of high risk, high reward, trying to counter that. As you've seen there, I just got absolutely mauled. Um, the lightning attack, hopefully we get to see it again, right here. Is that as long as you're not touching the ground, you can actually jump and fully reflect it off your sword and back to him, doing heavy damage to his health. So it's this this phase to new players will be really difficult, but once you've done it once, this phase will probably be the easiest out of all of them. And just like that, that is Jinichiro. He's gone. Let's get on to the next boss. Now, for the second boss, we'll be doing the Guardian Ape, which, in my personal choice, this is one of the worst bosses, because you will want to throw your PlayStation, or, or whatever you're playing on, you'll want to throw whatever you're playing on out of the window. It is so frustrating, but uh, you'll see why. And But I also think, in a, in, a, in a special way, it plays very similarly to the fight we've just seen. And even though it is an ape, and the other guy is not insulting him, but he is a person, not an ape. Sitting there so menacingly. Now this fight, it starts out pretty basic, and on every, however you start, it's actually a pretty hard fight. And you see he only has one phase, so you, you're walking into it pretty, pretty confident, thinking you, you've got everything. And... This is why I think so Firm Software made such a brilliant game in making the player feel safe at times and making the player feel like this is an average boss, but it always throws curveballs at you. So it kind of has gives you the impression to never, 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 never let your guard down. We'll, uh, we'll probably skip ahead when the good stuff happens. So now we're at a point 
We're just about to beat the first phase, and we're just about to, we're about to collect one of the main quest items to progress the game. This is the end of a very long section, very tired. You're tired at this point. You want to go home. This game has other plans. And throughout the game, you've been see when you defeat a big boss, you'll have you'll have a message at the end. You'll do this. You'll have a message at the end saying Shinobi execution, and. This is probably one of gaming's biggest portrayals, as it will say Shinobi Execution, and you'll be done. And you'll want to leave and go get your main quest items. But oh no, the game's like, no, 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 no. This is how we're playing. We're playing against a headless ape. And this is the day I never trusted a firm software game ever again. As again, oh, now we can show off this game's USP which is its revival system. Even when you die, you still have a second chance. But as you see, they are blacked out now, which means you cannot do it again. The only way you can do it again is by performing a death blow, which is getting the enemy's HP to zero, or is reducing the posture to 100. I nearly died there. That would have been embarrassing. Now, this is very interesting for a boss fight in Sekiro, since the first phase compared to this is completely different. And let's get forward a bit here. But um, as all of it's very thought out and methodic now, he's using his sword, he's using, even though he's headless, he feels like he's got eyes in the back of his head doing all this other stuff. Personally, it's one of the one of the most interesting boss fights, but it just completely changes the move sets. You've got to you've got to start deflecting more than run away, and whereas the other one was run and dodge, run and dodge. And that is the Guardian 8. An absolute fight. Now, you really don't know whether to trust the Shinobi against Kyushu, but he is dead. <laughs> For now. And that was Sekiro.